What would you do if one of the people you admired most was accused of murder? Faced with this question, one teen decides to uncover the secrets her hometown's been hiding for the last five years. She soon realizes that nearly everyone she knows is a suspect. What's more, someone wants her quiet and someone else wants her dead. Our tenacious teen, Pippa Fitzamobi, the book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And you're listening to Lit Society. Let's, Let's get it. And this is Alexis. And you're listening to Lit Society, a show about books and drama. Alexis, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. Well, this is the part of the show where we usually have a theme. There's no theme this week. Um, however, I, I was tasked with uh, figuring out and researching a theme. And all I could think of was Adnan Saeed, which we've talked about before, and also wrongly accused people. Did this book remind you of the serial podcast on Adnan Saeed at all? A lot, a lot. Do you know if it was lot. written after that um, series? Yes. Yeah, it of was. course. It it came out just a couple of years ago, 2021. Yeah. No, I'm so confused. I think it came out in 19 or, or 20. Cause she her um her follow up book came out in twenty twenty two I think not twenty 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 also something like that yeah so you're right this was originally published in twenty nineteen and it is number one of a series so number two has already come out mm -hmm. okay I'll have to look into that and I think number three also. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. In the span of two, three years. That's amazing. OK, well, let's go ahead then and take a um, or give the pass the mic to you and get some context on who Holly Jackson is and what her motivations were for this book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. OK, so I um, didn't find a lot of information about Holly, but she is a British author of young adult novels and People know her from this series, uh, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which was, like I mentioned, was published in 2019. And there's a series of um, three books. But there is a prequel novella to this, and it's titled Kill Joy. A Good Girl's Guide is a New York Times bestseller. And she's also received other accolades for this book. She attended uh, the University of Nottingham, okay, at, where she studied literary linguistics and creative writing. Uh, she graduated with a first class degree. Not sure what that means, but I believe it. <laughs> and then she has a master's degree in English. Holly is a true crime fan, true crime. So she's got... She listens to lots of true crime podcasts, documentaries, et cetera. And so while this book is not based on any particular case, she says she pulled a lot of things from it. She does say she's obsessed with true crime. And she great started this series after she listened to Serial. Oh, OK. I like that admission. OK, makes sense. I mm. I mean, I see some elements of it, which is fine. Yeah. Nothing was taken directly from the case, but some elements for sure. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that happened with Anand Saeed, too. It's, it seems like it's possible. OK, exactly. thank you for that. Well, do you also have perhaps before we dive into the um, spoiler filled discussion, a spoiler free synopsis of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder? Pippa will be a senior in high school. She selected the topic for her senior project and it's been approved. She's chosen to dive into a five-year-old missing person investigation that captured her small town. Will her project turn into an obsession that leads to a murderer or will her work put her own life in jeopardy? Kari, who do you think would enjoy this book? Well, the obvious demo are... Um people who grew up reading Nancy Drew, um, but just wanted a little something extra like logic. Um, not, not me, not me. <laughs> so I would 
would say them. And then also, if you are like Holly Jackson, our author, a fan of true crime, um, I think this book follows a format that is really pleasing to true crime um, fans, quote unquote, because uh, typically we like to try to solve the case as we go. Um, so Holly's writing is very much giving you the clues to solve the murder and you can see if you're right at the end so if that sounds enjoyable to you then perhaps a good girl's guide to murder is right up your alley and alexis what were your first thoughts of this book well when i saw the um book cover it kind of um popped up when i was searching for other stuff and i i just really like the book cover of the string um torn pieces of paper so i thought the book cover was intriguing i was like you know, a guy to murder. I could get into it. So, yeah, that's it. And um, since you've mentioned that th this is now a book of a series. Yeah, she's uh, published this book in 2019. She published the follow up in 2020 and then a third in 2021 and a prequel in 2021. I mean, she's really spitting these books out back to back. But on Goodreads, if Goodreads is to believe they're all highly rated. This is, of course, the most popular book. So it has like, you know, nearly 210,000 ratings um, and the others have under 100, but they're all like 4.1 and above. When I uh -huh. when you first mentioned this book, I thought, oh, it's going to be dark. We're going to talk about murder and a good uh -huh. girl's guide to murder is such a marketable title. I don't even know if it really fits the book, <laughs> but it's a great way to entice you. Right. Like right yeah, away. Definitely. Because I'm thinking, oh, this is going to teach me how to kill people. That's not a skill I want to have. Wait, why am I reading this? I so, know. <laughs> as I'm reading it, this is what I'm thinking. Like, I can't stop. Mm, but that's what, what I this? thought when I read the cover. I was like, is that, I, I guess I do want to know. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. I'm a good girl. <laughs> Tell me how to kill. Well, <laughs> what tips is she giving out? That I should take note of. Now that we've talked about what we thought this book was about, let's get into what actually it is about, what this story does. So if you could please, Alexis, take the stage and give us a deep dive into A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. All right, I'm ready. Okay, so here we go. Pippa Fitzamobi is focused. She's received approval to proceed with her senior project. Research into the 2014 missing person investigation of Addie Bell in Fairview, Connecticut, and how the media colored the audience. She felt like that was important to bring out. Pippa was approved on the condition that no ethical lines are crossed and she make no contact with either of the families involved in the case. If she does, her work would be disqualified. Okay. That's, that's a, that's really a strong point. Okay. <laughs> she gonna break all them rules. <laughs> right. She <laughs> begins her research by doing the very thing she was instructed not to do. Guess what she did? She contacted the family of Sal Singh and asked his younger brother for an interview. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing she did. She already disqualified and she didn't get started. <laughs> Next, she interviews someone from the Missing Persons Bureau. And through her research, she learns that the case she is investigating would have been deemed an at-risk case because Addie Bell, also known as Andrea, was a minor and her missing person status was out of character. And in such cases, the police are deployed to the location of where the person is missing and they gather details. They gather recent photographs, maybe DNA samples. They learn about their friends. Um, the location where the person is missing from is searched. If nothing is found, the police expand the investigation to include neighbors, friends, partners, or anyone who may have relevant information. Recognizing that teens don't always tell their parents everything, they reach out to their friends as early as possible. Addie Bell went missing five years ago and has never been found, nor her body recovered. 18 months after the case was closed, Addie was declared legally dead by a court. 
Throughout this story, Pippa keeps a log of her research, and I'm going to discuss a few of those entries as I retell the story. Okay. And I, I want to say here that I really like the fact that we have nobody for Andy because that also um, gives the reader some hope that this uh, this victim is likely still alive. And um, that also was a great tool to keep my interest throughout the story. I hope others feel the same. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just repeat her statistics. So what Pip did, what she started with is she looked to the papers and what was in the news. um, What were the, what information was available in the resources at that time? So, Of course, the local paper, anything on the TV she could include. And that's what she started with. Andrea Bell or Addie, 17 year old white female, five foot six with long blonde hair and blue eyes. Addie was reported missing from her home in Fairview, Connecticut, Friday, April 18, 2014. 14. Addie left home in her car, a white Honda Civic with her cell phone and no change of clothes. She was last seen by her younger sister, Becca, around 1030, wearing dark jeans and a blue copper sweater. Security footage confirms that her car was seen driving away from her home at about 1040 p.m. The police spoke to Addie's boyfriend, the next Saturday morning, April 19th, his name is Sal Singh. Sal attended the same high school as Addie. Sal told police he was visiting with his four friends, Naomi, Jake, Millie, and Max, at Max's house. And he left Max's house at 12.15 a.m. and walked home. His father confirmed that Sal returned home at approximately 12.50 a.m., And that's about a 30 minute distance from Max's house Mm -hmm. to Sal's home. And the police confirmed the alibi, his alibi with his four friends. Okay, by Sunday, there were posters and there were house to house inquiries. Monday, there were volunteers searching. Tuesday is when everything changed. Mid morning. Mm -hmm. Sal's friends had contacted the police from school and confessed to providing false information. They said Sal asked them to lie and he actually left Max's house at 1030, not 1215 a.m. So they start looking for Sal. Of course, he's now moved up on the suspect list by the police. If they cleared him before, They brought him back into attention. No one could find Sal. He wasn't at school or home and he wasn't answering his phone. It would come out later that Sal had sent a confession text to his father, a confession text. By Tuesday evening, guess what? Bad news. Mm -mm. Sal's body was found in the woods. (gasps) He had killed himself. And while the details of his death were not released, there were rumors about the actual death or how the death took place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On Wednesday, they found Addie's car parked on a small residential road. By the following Monday, the police gave a statement. They stated that they had sufficient evidence to identify Sal Singh as the person involved with Addie's abduction and murder. They weren't looking for anyone else. They would continue, however, to look for her body. Their evidence included that they found Addie's. Is it? Am I saying her name wrong? (laughs) Andy. 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 They found Andy's body. Andy's phone on Sal's body. There were forensic tests that um, found traces of Andy's blood under his fingernails of his right middle and index finger. Mm, that Andy, don't look good. Andy's blood was in the trunk of her car and Sal's fingerprints found were found on the dashboard and steering wheel of Andy's car along those of her um 
family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm going to share this final part. And then I got a question for you, Kari. Okay. The police had enough to charge Sal. And though her body was never found, missing persons, her missing person case was closed in mid June of 2014. And as I mentioned earlier, 18 months later, she, Andy was declared dead in absentia based on the circumstances surrounding her death. And even though there wasn't a trial, there was a conviction or a conviction by jury and Sal was never able to defend himself. The whole town believes him to be guilty. Mm -hmm. And there is never any, when they talk about it, there's never any alleged, any probably, any might have, or most likely it's always the murderer. He's guilty. He did it. Um, what was portrayed in the media had most people com- had people convinced, but Pip had her doubts and hoped her doubts would lead to the case being reopened. Pip believed in Sal's innocence. Now, Kari, mm-hmm. I ask you, <laughs> with the results, the evidence that they had, and if you've watched enough TV, what do you think about it? Is it substantial Solid. enough? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't believe in a text from him being even included among evidence. Anyone can send a text. You're not there when someone sends the text. The strongest thing from my extensive knowledge as a (laughs) listener of Serial Season 1. I mean, but I've listened to it like 30 times. Come on. Uh, So uh, I know things. I would say the strongest um, evidence is that DNA evidence. The fact that her blood was under his nails. That to me is a done deal. Now you have directly connected the victim, the uh, missing person with uh, the alleged um, murderer. (laughs) So, yeah, that to me is the strongest thing. Even the... um, her DNA being in his car, like his hair, her hair or something. Not her, in his car, in her in car. In her car. So his DNA was in her car, excuse me. Right. Um, that doesn't tell me anything. But when you talk about blood, we're not interacting with each other's blood regularly, you know? So that to me is nearly sufficient to say that he was at least involved. Yeah. And I see here parts of Adnan Saeed from um, Syria. And I also see a little bit of OJ. <laughs> Here, like mm. those were two cases that came to mind with the evidence brought against Singh. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Why? What did you think? Did you think this was good enough to, you know, um, basically convict him without a trial? Um, no, I didn't. Oh, Even of course blood. not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you work for the <laughs> litigators. <laughs> <laughs> so listen let's but get this into is a some good point like logs. you are working with law on a regular basis and i'm a layman and often the court of public opinion is the first and final court that matters and that's so dangerous because look what i'm basing my opinion on on podcasts i've listened to and books i've read you know that's not reality and that's what people do and they and before um you're even convicted in a court you're convicted by the media oftentimes and that's based on bias so it's a very dangerous thing and i like how this book although it is technically ya whatever that means um is bringing Bringing out these truths about society. It's really right. Cool. Yeah. And I don't work with law. Um, and and especially we don't have those type of lawyers at our firm. We're more of a corporate firm. So. Right. Um, okay. But I, I do have some experience, past experience with it. When you were arrested. <laughs> And convicted let's not talk, of murder. Let's not talk, up, let's not talk about that. Okay? <laughs> Look it up, y'all. Look it Stop up. It. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into these log entries that she wrote. Okay, so log entry number three. It's an interview with Stanley Forbes. He's a journalist with the Fairview Mail. Stanley covered the case locally and was present at the hearing that declared Addie's, Addie Andy dead. Pip you love believed, Addy. You really want this girl to be Addy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pip believed he's a poor journalist. Cara, do you remember why she felt like he was a poor journalist? 
Yeah, he used a lot of sensational terms calling um, the teen that was accused of the murder a monster um, before what, why she thought that before even talking to him. Yeah. yeah. OK, she then I would say he, mm-hmm. I would say he um, used a lot of um, circumstantial evidence in his writing to basically convict this kid. And yeah, she he didn't seem like a true journalist bringing out the facts and sticking to the facts. It was a lot of opinion and bias in his writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, she called him out on her interview with him for being a racist and an irresponsible journalist. She learned, however, from his interview that police thought Andy was killed and then put in a trunk of her car to be disposed of. And that Sal had a death note, a death threat note in his locker. What was it in her locker? I think it was in her in in her locker In her locker. Yes. Yeah, the police was, mm-hmm. think um, that it's possible that Sal intercepted Andy after he left the party, killed her, drove her car to a different spot where it was found and then walked home from there. Yeah. So um, Andy, or I'm sorry, not Andy. Pippa doesn't know about this note. And she's like, oh, that doesn't look good. It's a note like I'm going to kill you. You're going to die by my hands. It's like really um, explicit, like not hiding yeah. at all what it's trying to say. And the, and the journalist is like, quote unquote, journalist is like, I bet you didn't know about this letter. So I'm right. right. And whatever I said about him, it applies because he was guilty. Right. Next. And you a kid. And you don't tell me nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Log entry number four. This is an interview with Ravi Singh, the younger brother of Sal Singh. Here we learn a bit more about Sal. He's a kind hearted teenager with a cheerful disposition. Andy would come over to um, their house, um, the Singh house a few times. Not a lot, but a few. His parents liked her. They thought she was a nice girl. And then, but he never went to her house. He never went to her house. Mm -hmm. Sal learned that Andy was missing from one of Andy's friends. And he spent the rest of the day trying to call Andy, text Andy, just really reaching out to her saying, you know, um, just let people know that you're okay. That's all you need to do. Um, Sal told Robbie that everything Andy did was deliberate and she'd probably run off to punish someone. Robbie assumed that it was her dad based off previous conversations that he'd heard. The last time Robbie saw Sal was the morning before school on Monday. Oh, Tuesday, on Tuesday. Later, he would learn that he had sent his father a text, that is, Sal sent his their father a text saying, it was me, I did it, I'm so sorry. Yeah, the brother found this out about his big brother. Yeah. Heartbreaking. R- Ravi, however, never thought Sal to be suicidal, and he doesn't think Ravi, um, that Sal would have killed Andy. So Pip begins to build her persons of interest report. And speaking to her, to his brother has only solidified what she already knew. Like new information hasn't come out. Everything he knew, she she already knows. Um, But she still is hanging around him because she's like, you should be a part of this, this investigation I'm conducting. He's like, uh, first of all, this is kind of gross that this is your class project. But also, you know, I feel like I'm the only one who believes my brother could be innocent and you're trying. So fine. I'll like help you in any way I can. You're the sergeant and I'll follow your orders. Pip begins to build her persons of interest report and it's including Jason Bell. Why Jason Bell? Because Ravi referenced that Andy and her father had a potentially contentious relationship. Mm hmm. All right. Now, Pip decides to interview Sal's friends. The first of those friends is Naomi. Naomi is also Pip's best friend's sister. And her name is Lauren. 
Pip's best friend's name is Lauren. Pip is at their home often. I think she practically, the kids are growing up together. That's, yeah, they go to the same like her school. Second home. I was like, oh, that's like me at Alexa's house growing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Naomi says the evening Andy went missing. They were hanging out. And that is Sal, Naomi, um, and a couple other their friends. Oh, Max. And I think a person named Millie. They were all hanging out together at Max's house. They were drinking, talking, playing a little Xbox. They had a low key evening. They even took a few pictures. Pip mentioned that Sal wasn't in the pictures posted on Facebook because and Pip says that because she's friends on Facebook with Naomi. And so she could look through her pictures of that day and she didn't see Sal in any of those pictures. Well, Naomi says he was gone by then. From what she remembers about Andy, it was like that Andy liked to pick fights with Sal over little things. And Naomi caught Andy bad news. Naomi Mm -hmm. says the police, they reached out to the police, her and her friends, about Sal telling them to lie because they didn't want to get in trouble. And they didn't think Sal had anything to do with Andy missing. So there wouldn't be any harm in telling the truth about what time. Yeah. The boyfriend was like, they always suspect the boyfriend. That's me. So can y'all just give me an alibi? Even though I wasn't, you know, doing anything wrong, I want them to stop looking at me and go out and actually find who did it. And the friends are like, okay, we'll lie. Um, besides, we want them to find who really we want them to find Andy because she might still be alive or we want her, them to find whoever did this and took her life. So, yeah, we'll lie. And then they were like, yeah, we don't like lying. Let's go all together <laughs> and tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Pip also interviewed Max. Now, Max, he said that Sal was kind of quiet that evening and that Naomi was out of sight for a while while they were playing games. Naomi didn't mention that, okay? Mm -hmm. Sal dipped out without saying goodbye. Naomi said Sal said goodbye to everybody. So there's some variations in in the story. Max also said that Sal did not talk about Andy at all which is contrary to what Naomi said. So Pip decides that she's going to add Naomi to the the list of persons of interest. Now, Kari, Max was involved in some drugs and stuff. So what do you know about that? (laughs) Oh, why are you asking me? Um, Okay, (laughs) so uh, yeah. So there were these parties that the teens would attend and throw called calamity parties. And it was like, um, you know, revelry, uh, alcohol and uh, Pippa finds out drugs also. Now, Max is like the very influential, privileged um, idiot. Um, He's like older than them, too, by a little bit. And he he would attend these calamities. um, But also at the parties and outside of the parties, he was taking drugs but buy them from Andy and an unnamed source on occasion. So Andy was selling drugs. Yeah. To the chair. That is, yeah, that's what we learned from the interview here. So now, as I mentioned, Naomi Ward is added to the persons of interest list. There are now two people on the list. So Pip decides she's going to interview Mr. Ward. She interviews Mr. Ward to kind of get some insight into the person Sal was. He was some he was Sal's teacher and thought that Mr. Ward would be able to give adult insights. Mr. Ward is also the parent to Pip's best friend, Lauren, and her sister, Naomi, who was added to the persons of interest list and Mm -hmm. is one of Sal's best friends. Mm -hmm. So she learns that Mr. Ward did know Sal pretty well. He knew that he had been accepted to Yale where he wanted to study history. He spoke to Sal that Tuesday before his death um, to see how he was doing. Um, He said Andy 
didn't have any classes with him. So he didn't really know her that the last couple of years. So Pip learns that Robbie, Ravi, Sal's brother, tried to look into Andy's disappearance years ago, but because he was too close, he didn't get very far. People wouldn't talk to him. No one believed he was genuine. Um, everyone's like, you trying to clear the name of your murderer brother? No, nah, we're not helping you. And yeah. just looking at you reminds us of this terrible crime that happened in our sweet, innocent town. Yeah. So he and- was never getting anywhere. Yeah, so he decides that he wants to support Pip, just as Kari mentioned, um, as she attempts to, attempts to uncover the truth. And he gives Pip Sal's phone. And by getting this phone, Pip learns that Sal called Andy a lot after she went missing. And it wouldn't make sense to call somebody you know you've already killed. Yeah, as soon as he found out that she was missing, he did what anyone would do, which is like blow up her phone, texting and calling like, just say you're okay." And once or twice might be an act, but you're by yourself. No one even knows you're sending these messages and you're sending like a hundred of them nearly. Um, That sounds like someone who really doesn't know where you are. Yeah. She also sees that Andy called Sal before she went missing and Sal didn't answer. And there was also a text, including the final text to his father. Pip noticed that the text to the father doesn't match the other text messages that he had sent to Andy and questions whether someone else might have actually sent that text. They also know that from his notes section and the um of his phone that the Wednesday before Andy went missing, it, there appears to be a license plate a license plate number listed, but they can't really search um license plates on the internet. So Pip tells Ravi a few of her theories. And one of those theories is that a third party killed Andy and framed Sal because he was her boyfriend and he had no alibi and then murders Sal and plants the blood and the phone. Her second, another one of her theories is that Andy is not dead and she killed Sal. Mm, this is where it. I am at this point in the book because we don't know where Andy is, but we know Sal is dead for sure. And they never found Andy's body. It's just something about Andy is bad news. Like, uh, who said that? Naomi? Yeah. Or, yeah. And so I'm like, Couple maybe people. something with Andy selling drugs and Sal maybe was going to go to the police. So Andy had Sal killed and has been living undercover. Yeah, you know, that's the word on the street, y'all. Mm-hmm. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. <sighs> Pip and Robbie decide it's best to interview Andy's closest friends to find out who she really was. So we already know she was a deal in the little drug. So that tip we know about her. But let's see what else we can know. Emma, that's the first friend. She agreed to answer a few questions. Pip learns that Andy was beautiful, popular, fun, and destructive. Emma wanted to be (laughs) her. And as she looks back on what happened or who she was when she was around Andy, she realizes she didn't like the person she was. She further learned that Andy was not expected to go out the night she was went missing. She was supposed to go and watch her sister who had just returned home from the hospital from attempting to harm herself. Yeah, something in that house and Andy's house is bad. It's really bad. No one's happy in there. Yeah. And she mentioned that she had seen this is Emma speaking. Emma mentioned that she had seen Sal and Andy arguing at school. They don't know what it was about, but they did see them arguing. And the other friend that was interviewed, a little less forthcoming, but she was able to interview her briefly. She learns, and this friend is Chloe. She learns from Chloe that Andy always had drama going on and that Mm -hmm. Andy liked keeping secrets. Pitting people against each other, 
Yeah. Yeah. She didn't say where she got her money from. Andy was, um, she had a lifestyle that was too good to run away from. That's what her friend suggested. So as Pip is asking questions, she asks about her family relationships. She asks about um, trying to find out who Andy was. And Chloe immediately gets defensive and says, you can't know Andy from a few interviews. Andy's conversation with Chloe ends abruptly because Chloe feels Pip is getting way too personal. And none of that helps answer the question about where she is, where Andy is. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, where I feel like um, Pippa diverged from the right, the correct (laughs) path uh, for the first time. (laughs) Where Uh, she like wholeheartedly jumps into, I'm an investigator, so I can lie. (laughs) <laughs> she does that so, a couple of times. What Kyrie is talking about is Pip decides she wants to catfish Chloe yep. to get to the real tea. And mm-hmm. so she uses her pay as you go SIM card and begins to text Chloe to get some details. And through that texting, she learns that Andy had a relationship with a secret older guy and that while neither Emma or Chloe, both of Andy's friends, really believed her, it was certainly possible. They couldn't put it past her. And she could have been having an affair with an older guy. So, so she texts she text Chloe, right? As Emma. She's yes. like, hey, did an investigate or did this kid who's looking into the case contact you? Right. And she keeps it light and vague. And then Chloe's like, yeah, uh, really weird, huh? And then um, Pippa, as Emma, is like, did you tell her everything? Oh, is, I think Pippa is Chloe. Oh, OK, no. OK. She, I think so, she's Chloe. I think it's the other way around. Oh, sorry. So Pippa texts Emma, like, did you tell her everything? And Emma's like, nah, girl, I didn't tell her this, this or this. And um, Pippa, as Emma's like, interesting. <laughs> me, me. <there." laughs> I'm like, this is dishonest, Pippa. Come on. Yeah. Well, she started off that way when she went against the teacher's first instruction. So, uh, well, get out of here. <laughs> So let's check that person's of interest list again. We got Jason Bell. That is Andy's father. We have Naomi Ward. That is Sal's best friend. And we also learned that Naomi um, Ward is um, kind of in love with Sal and he's not interested. Or was. Yeah. Was. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. we have secret older guy. Listen. We don't know who that is. So one evening, Pip goes for a night of camping with her friends and she notices someone is in the trees watching them. She's like, all right, Pip, let me just tell you a little bit more about Pip. Pip likes to mind her own business, do her homework, get her stuff accomplished. The fun stuff, she not (laughs) interested in that. What's fun to her is schooling, school books, and more school stuff. That's what she likes to do. Mm -hmm. So she not really interested in this hangout that she's in, but it's the last thing they can do before they jump into school. So she participates with her friends. So one evening... Night of camping, like I said, she noticed somebody watching them in the trees. The friends gang chase. They see this. They don't really (laughs) see it. They just go on. They can hear what Pip is talking about. And they end up chasing after this person to no avail. And when they return to their camping location and Pip gets in her sleeping bag, she finds a folded printer paper with the note. Stop digging Pippa. First, she accuses her friends. And they was like, we ain't got time for that. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. They deny it. was out there out. chasing whoever was watching us with you. Mm-hmm. So how, when we find time to write this note and stick it in your sleeping bag. Right. She she, accused she's accusing them. the boys. Mm-hmm. Following her catfish with um, of Chloe, Pip follows up with Emma and learns a bit more about the older man. Emma thought that he was made up and... She didn't have enough information to actually report him to the police. And that's why he wasn't mentioned to the police when they interviewed them. Um, She said Andy told her she could ruin the older man. So that was interesting. So he Mm -hmm. had to be somebody that was in a position um, 
That could be author- ruined. Yeah, that could be ruined. Had some authority, some yeah. skin in the game, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Emma recalled Andy calling Mr. Ward a few unsavory names because of the, w- and she thought it was because of the way she dressed. He always yeah, seemed he to tell her. Yeah, because he mentioned something like, put on some clothes. This is yeah. school. And she was like, you jerk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pip decides to add Mr. Ward to the persons of interest list. Now, because he said he barely in. knew Andy at all. And she's so whatever was go- going on, whatever he said to her caused her so much anger that what she said about him, her friends still remember to this day. Yeah. So obviously you had some interaction. Yeah. And he said he ain't had no dealings with her. Yeah. So. Back to our persons of interest list. There's Jason Bell. That's, again, that's um, Andy's father, Naomi Ward, Mr. Ward's daughter, also Sal's best friend, also (laughs) everybody, Pip's (laughs) best friend's sister, the secret older guy. We don't know who that is. I'm even like Robbie might be a murderer because, um, I'm even like the brother might be the murderer and that's why he helping to throw her off the scent as she gets closer each time. So you decided to add him because she didn't yes. add him. Add him to the list. Okay. Pippa? No, we're not. Okay. All right. So Andy <laughs> decides to muster up the courage to speak to Mr. Ward again. She asks, you know, she has to literally tell this older man, you know, you had lied to me and I want you to tell me the truth. And this is an older man that she's comfortable with that, you know, because it's the best friend's father. And a great teacher. Like he's Mm -hmm. her teacher, too. He's a great teacher. She's like, I don't want to. I don't want to treat you with any type of favor in my investigation that I'm taking very seriously. So I'm going to let you know there's some discrepancies in your story. Now, you say you barely knew who Andy was. (laughs) However, she had choice words about you. Make the math math, Mr. Ward. Mm -hmm. Make a math teacher, but you better get to (laughs) mathing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when she says that, Mr. Ward proceeds to tell Pip that Andy was a bully and that Mr. Ward decided to call her father and tell him about the situation instead of going to report her to the school and having her be potentially expelled. He told her father and this happened the week, the week prior to her going missing so after pip heard this story she was relieved like huh, at least he didn't laugh for no other reason oh that's mm-hmm. too much i was nervous yeah he doesn't want to but smirch a dead girl's name so he's like between you and me she did some really heinous things and our school has a no bullying policy she would have definitely been expelled and that would have been her whole future so instead of telling on her i told her dad and we know Things ain't okay in that house. So who knows what the dad did? Mm -hmm. So Pip follows up with Naomi and gets the 411. Okay. Pip then follows up with the girl that bullied, that was bullied. And the girl and her brother are added to the persons of interest list. Now, let me say this. The girl that was bullied, her name is Natalie De Silva. De Silva. Kari, what information do you have about her? Yeah, I mean, Andy, when we say bully, Andy really ruined her life. She um, orchestrated an, a situation that ended with Natalie's naked videos of her naked being on the Internet. Um, everyone in school like ostracized Natalie behind this. Um, it was really, really dark what Andy was doing to Natalie, all because she was like jealous of her. They looked similar and Andy wanted to be the top girl in school. So she had to bring down Natalie. And then Natalie went on to live a life that was forever haunted by her experience in high school. Like she met a girl in college that reminded her of Andy, punched her in the face. And now she wearing an ankle bracelet. And I'm like, whoa, everyone. <laughs> what kind of town is this? Yeah, she got like federal charges against her or something for hitting that girl in college. And I was like, I don't, I'm, that college crazy. And small you towns know? be into some stuff. That's all right? I can say. Mm-mm. So, yeah, it's kind of like ruined her life. And then later we find out she can't get a job because of it. And yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it's it. a mess. It's yeah. a mess. So um, Pip builds her persons of interest list again, and she adds Natalie De Silva and her brother Daniel De Silva. She, they've got motive. She's got yeah. motive. Mm-hmm. So under the Freedom of Information Act. Pip decided to request a transcript of the interview with Sal Singh. And the interview didn't make Sal look too good. He literally withheld information from the police about why they argued. And Pip begins to think that maybe Sal was covering up something. Because if you know your friend is, your girlfriend is missing and any bit of information might help why would you withhold information from the police? Mm-hmm. That's suspect to her. Let's jump into a little bit about um, Andy's sister, Becca. Pip came across her one day and decided to ask if she'd be open to questions. Again, she done already disqualified herself from the assignment. Just, <laughs> let me just insert that. After Pip introduced herself, Becca knew Pip was the one working on the project about her sister's death. Because why, Kari? She was dating Stanley Forbes, the journalist. Oh, you know, Stanley's role was always foggy to me. Yeah. So thank you for clearing that up. He was feeding that information. The first question Mm -hmm. Pippa asked, Becca wasn't expecting. But the next question, she fidgeted, she looked down and decided that the interview wasn't a good idea and she cut it short. Mm-hmm. Now, can you describe Becca, Kari? Yeah, she's um, the timid younger sister of Andy, um, whatever is going on in that house. Obviously, the dad is a tyrant in many ways. And Becca, uh, without her sister's protection, all of that energy, all of her dad's energy was no doubt focused on her and her mom. So Becca has like some she you can tell she's someone that's been through trauma. Um, she, however, does cooperate with Andy. She doesn't seem angry about the project, but she's like, this is opening too many wounds Um, you know, tearing off too many scabs, just leave our family out of it, Um, which is reasonable. Again, that reminds me of Serial. The victim's mom is like, a family is like, we don't want to get involved in your little project. We actually lost somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, Becca's uh, request makes sense to me. Yeah. So let's fast forward and talk about some of the important things that Pip learned in her investigation as we lead to who is the murderer. Okay. Number one, Sal did not leave the party early. What? They had lied on him. All his friends conspired? Yes. He left at 12, 15, just like he said. His friends lied. Why, Kari? Because they were being blackmailed. <gasps> what? By who? How? The blackmailer told them if they didn't lie, then the truth about them would be revealed. And what was the truth, Kari? Now we have the plot of um, I Know What You Did Last Summer or something. I've never seen that movie, but I pretty (laughs) much know this is it. So a long time ago, last summer, not that (laughs) long ago, they were all out with Max, the rich kid, drinking and, you know, uh, being inebriated as bad children do. And as they was driving home drunk, they hit a bump. Well, that bump was a whole person. When they saw him, it was too late to skid away. And they just boop, 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 like a video game. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and then um, they all got out and was like, there's blood everywhere. And then Max was like, he probably did. Y'all, let's go. And so they were like, oh. And the um, insecure among them. Now, none of them should have been in this car. Uber does exist. Um, but none of them should have been in this car. But the timid among them, the insecure We're like, we'll just do what everyone says so as to not rock the boat and get everyone in trouble. I mean, we killed someone that we're going to go to jail forever. So let's just not never talk about it again. 
And then they get this uh, message like, I know what you did. If you don't lie about Sal, then I'm going to the police. Also, that man that they hit, like he was a bump in the road, was not dead. So they left him there. And because of that, he is now a paraplegic. Mm -hmm. Man. The and story so they're like, and they didn't mm-hmm. want this story to get out, so they immediately changed their story. Mm-hmm. They was like, "Yeah, he left at uh, seven o'clock. It was early. Sun mm-hmm. was out. I don't mm-hmm. know." So <sighs> another thing she learned, Pip and they ripped away his alibi. I'm sorry, this was so wrong of them. I was shocked. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. took away his only alibi to protect themselves. To These protect are not good kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. Additionally, Pip found a picture on Facebook after getting her best friend Lauren to access her sister Naomi's account so she could Facebook stalk the pictures from the night Addie went missing and the other friend's pages. There is a picture, what she finds is a picture that was taken shortly after midnight that is clear that Sal is actually at the party, the friend's party, and Sal is taking the picture. After they say he left, he is there taking the picture. So obviously they lied and this is evidence. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, are you ready for the big bombshell? Woo, I'm ready. Okay, first, Kari, as you're reading along with this book, who, if anybody, are you guessing the killer might be? Okay, I'm ready. The brother. Because the brother. I'm thinking, listen, I'm thinking <laughs> this is one of them Hercule Poirot ish type of novels where, you know, Poirot be like, oh, but the Mon Ami, there is evidence no one could have known about. And I'm like, <laughs> what is Holly dragging us around the world for? It's going to be the brother. And I like him. So I'm like, he definitely did it because I like him. Okay. okay. So that's number one. Number two, I'm like the dad. Although we don't have much information about him, it's just all too mysterious and eerie. And Pippa mentions that during the first press conference about Andy Missing, The dad talked about his daughter in past tense, Mm, which seemed premature. If you really think she's alive, why would you do that? And if you don't think she's alive, why are you so sure? Mm -hmm. Did you do it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking at the men and I'm starting with the brother because that would just be too convenient. And then the dad. What about you? Uh, I was thinking. So the way this story is written, you can deduce when she's deducing. And I and right. I will enjoy that. And so oh, you do because you told me you don't care. You just read it and go along. And I'm like, but we're supposed to be trying to solve this with the protagonist. Yes. This particular story. Yes. He's trying to solve it with the protagonist. So I enjoy, I'm invited and I accept the invite and think about it. <laughs> as she yeah, yeah. thinks about it mm-hmm. so of her list I work from her list and on her list I'm thinking the father did it it's mm-hmm. gotta be the father I don't think Natalie has done anything but I, mm-hmm. I'm for sure confident that the dad has done something wrong mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and Mr. Ward I don't think about him because he's such a nice guy why would that's silly why would he do that mm-hmm. So that's yeah. what I'm thinking. He's so, a non-factor. Yeah. So Pip continues to receive threatening notes telling her to stop investigating. Going full steam of head. One of those notes. Full steam of head. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like when you boil lettuce? <laughs> oh, it's going full <laughs> steam ahead. Oh, okay. I heard one of those letters leads to her dog being nabbed by a dog no. napper. And, they and we said, met the dog like at the very beginning. He our dog too now. Yeah. We like really like him. He's a loyal golden, I think a golden retriever-ish mm-hmm. type of dog. Mm-hmm. So she needs, in order to get her dog back, she needs to bring all her research to a place and destroy it or the dog dies. Mm-hmm. She does what is required and they kill her dog anyway. No. With this, Pip sinks into a depression and is giving up. She's devastated. 
devastated. She's like, how can I go on? They killing dogs. I could be next. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. I loved him so much. And Sal encourages her to continue on. And she relents and continues on. Of course, Pip didn't destroy all her research. She couldn't do that. That don't even make sense. (laughs) It's not like her. Yeah, because they were like, come to the woods with all your stuff and destroy it in front of us. And we'll be hiding in the woods watching you. She was like, OK. And she didn't. And she's like, I had emailed everything to me anyway, because <laughs> I ain't stupid, stupid. I just wanted my dog. I just want my dog. That's what she wants. Mm-hmm. So Pip had to re-add Mr. Ward to the list. Why? Why? Too many stories. Too many inconsistencies. <laughs> Turns out Mr. Ward is what the older guy that Andy was involved with. Uh, the teacher and the student, how cliche. It's a little long, the story, but let me tell you, Andy was trying to use him to try and get into a good school like Sal was getting into Yale and Andy threatened to ruin him. When he found out she was cyber bullying someone, he felt like, okay, she got this against me, but I got something against her. And then the evening Andy went missing, she showed up at Mr. Ward's house threatening and destroying paintings of his beloved dead wife. And in an attempt to stop her, he pushed her and she hit her head on his desk. Confused, but conscious and bleeding from the head, she left before he could provide aid. The next day, he learned she was missing from his daughter, Naomi. So he panicked. He thought he'd killed her. So he needed to give the police a stronger suspect to protect himself and his family in case they found her and could ID him. So on Tuesday, he lured Sal away from school under the guise of teaching comfort, teacher comfort. You know, teachers can be comforters. And he gave the young boy. Obviously not. (laughs) Sleeping pills. He gave him, he fed him sleeping pills. Then convinced him to go in the woods to look for Andy. As Sal fell asleep, he placed a bag over his head. And held it till he died. And talked to him about the beautiful libraries of Yale so that he could die thinking of something beautiful. What? I was like, this book yeah. got dark. But you know what? If you're going to give me a murder right. mystery, don't make it fluffy, fluffy and light and they're low stakes. These stakes are high and they are real. This teacher had an intimate relationship with a student so that he wouldn't be found out. He was like, well, you're trying to blackmail me to get you into Yale, which isn't even something teachers can do. Like, you really dumb kid. Mm -hmm. He was looking at Andy like, I can't get you into Yale with these grades. So (laughs) um, she was like, well, if you don't get me into the school, my boyfriend's going in. I'm going to tell everyone about us. And he was like, well, I found out you a bully. So I'm going to tell the school and ruin your life or leave me alone. And so she came to the house, like Alexis said, and was um, thuggish, ruggish. And he was like pushing his stuff. And it ended up with um, Sal being killed in the woods. Mm -hmm. Our first uh, true, like our first, this is the first murder we've discovered, even though we're looking for Andy still. Mm -hmm. So what about Andy? Where is Andy? Well, He says that at the end of the July, this is after he'd killed Sal. At the end of the July, he was driving down the street and he saw her and she looked like she'd gotten into some drugs. So he um, if she would have returned to Fairview, everybody would have knew that Sal was murdered. So he couldn't let her go. So he kept her in a house that he used to live in with his wife and family that he was supposed to have sold. Mm-hmm. And she's been there ever since. So, in the attic. In the attic. Mr. War said Andy didn't remember who she was, but he kept her in the attic and made the attic nice for her and fed her butterfingers. Tried to get her to remember who she was and told her who she was. Mm-hmm. But was it Andy? 
What so happened? this is interesting. So um, Pippa sets up a tracking device on her phone, leaves it in Mr. Ward's car to find out where he's going. When she really suspects him, she's like, I got to figure out what he's doing. So she finds that he's visiting this house that he was supposed to have sold. Like Alexis said, she but she calls the police first. I'm like, very good, Pippa. Yeah. And busting like, Mr. Ward, you better tell me what's going on. The police going to be here soon. Where is Andy? I know it was you. And he was like, I know. I'm so sad. Uh, she's in the attic. <laughs> so the police bust in and Pippa runs upstairs to the attic. And the girl is sitting on the bed with her legs crossed, looking out into space. Eating a butterfinger. Eating a butterfinger candy bar. And the girl looks at um, Pippa and goes, hi, I'm Andy. And Pippa goes, hi, you're not Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really well done. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and there is a girl there. She is out of it a little, uh, but she's not Andy. So even all these years later, it's obvious she's not Andy. Yeah. So do you know what happened to Andy at this point and who made it happen to her? Yes, unfortunately, the girl in the attic was just a girl, um, um, mentally disturbed girl with some psychological issues that Mr. Ward has been um, holding prisoner in his attic, pretending it's Andy to feed whatever trauma he put himself through by nearly murdering Andy. So, no, the girl is not Andy. She's just some girl. So. So at this point, I'm like, well, Andy is definitely alive now because we have this like red herring type of character. And why would we have this if not for the real Andy being involved still mm. in some fashion? So and then there was like this B&B out in the boonies mm -hmm. and there was an older woman caring for it. And when they showed her a picture of Andy, she was like, this girl was just here last week. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, Andy is still alive. And everyone's like, don't listen to grandma. She got dementia. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, grandma be knowing. Y'all listen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, are you ready for the truth? So, you know, after the pretend Andy was found. Of course, the family has to get involved, right? The family, because yeah. they got to say, no, that's not my daughter. So that's a lot. So as they're going. Which do they? This girl is still alive. It's not a dead body to identify. I feel like they, the police could do their jobs and be like, this ain't Andy. Let's not even get the family involved because right. this is going to hurt them some more. But now they call him up and is like, come meet this girl that was that's pretending to be your daughter who we still think is dead. Yeah. Just cruel. So um, Pip went to check on Becca again. That's um, that's Andy's sister. Andy's sister, um, after the previous events of the evening, again, trying to identify if her sister is dead or alive. So Becca welcomed Pip and offered her tea. And she initially refused the tea because she just wanted to be quick, you know, check on her and whatnot. But she learned Becca was making something for herself. And plus she was on her way to a little party, oh, a carnival or something. Um, but she ends up telling her, hey, yeah, I'm going to have some. So why don't we just have tea together? So Pippa accepts the tea to kind of relax Becca so that she can still get information out of Becca because since Andy isn't found, Pippa's investigation is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Pip tells Becca that the new person wasn't actually Addy, as Kari mentioned, and then proceeds... Andy! <laughs> Andy. Wasn't Andy. And then proceeds to tell the story of how Becca was drugged and raped at a party that her sister was supplying the drugs. Yeah, this kind of came out of nowhere. So um, in the book, it is a little more um, logical how Pippa gets here. But she's like, I know that drugs are being supplied to kids. And I know that Max is... Um, someone without mor morals. He's just a terrible person, privileged, amoral uh, type of character. And so she calls Max and she's like, I'm going to ask you a question and you tell me the truth and tell it to me fast. Or I'm going to the police with evidence that Sal was 
indeed at the party when you said he wasn't um so so uh, max is like don't get me involved i'm tired of this fine what do you want to know and she's like did you drug andy's little sister and rape her he's like no i mean you know i slept with her she didn't say no and um pippa's like that's because you drugged her and he's like oh yeah well yeah i did it then <laughs> for real yes yep, for real yep that's what he did um so she confronted her sister Becca confronted her sister and her sister broke her heart and that she didn't care she didn't provide any sympathy this is the same night that Becca came home from the hospital from trying to harm her own self so she figured she'd talk to her sister her sister would help and they'd be able to figure it out it didn't go the way she expected Andy was only concerned about getting in trouble for selling drugs. So Andy then turned to berating her sister, Becca. So when Andy pushed her and Becca pushed back, Andy fell to the floor, coughing and choking, and Becca watched her sister die. Yeah, so Becca didn't try to, like, get help for Andy. She let her die. Um, And Andy had just came from Mr. Ward's house. So Andy had a head injury. And Becca didn't know all of that. So when Becca sees Andy, she's like, I just got out the hospital for trying to take my life. And I feel like I'm at the point where I need to tell you why. And it's because this happened to me. And um, Andy's like, well, don't be telling people I sell drugs. (laughs) And um, Becca's like, what? Did you not hear what I just said? And so Andy's like, you know what? You need to be happy. Anyone even wanted you that way because you're just a fat version of me. And so she pushes her sister. There's a pushing situation. And then Andy falls to the ground, convulses, and is like, da, 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 da. And Becca's like, do, do, do. Hmm, Hi, somebody calling me. (laughs) She just let Andy stay there on the ground. Yeah, that's how it happened. And Becca reveals that she dumped her body in the septic tank in the old farmhouse. So So now we know Andy is gone for real. Yep. So that's our story. Why don't we take a quick break? Let's do it. Yes. So what's your final verdict and would you recommend this book? The stakes are high. OK. And it's not like this. Remember when we did Nancy Drew and we like, why is she so nosy? Why is she going to people's house? Why don't she mind her business? Why are her parents low key trying to kill her? So <laughs> with this book, I felt like um the motive for not the motive, but the intention, the the why for Pippa was so solid. Um, she admired Sal growing up. She never thought this made this um this murder, this situation made sense the way it was laid out by the media and by officers. And for her senior project, she's like, I want to do something different. So I'm going to solve this murder like she's a studious student. Everything she's doing is within the realm of possibility. She's handling interviews in a correct way, speaking to the right people. When you follow her, it all makes sense. And then when you get to the end, it's not like, whoa, that came out of nowhere because she's giving you all the tools as she's collected them. As a character, as she's talking to everyone, you're talking to them too and you're grabbing this evidence. So you come to the conclusions almost like alongside her. Mm -hmm. Really well done, Holly Jackson. I really enjoyed this book. I was just telling you, I'm actually going to read two, three, and the prequel, um, I think in the next week or two, I'm going to try to tackle that like I did with Crazy Rich Asians, because even though there are some dark elements, um, it doesn't drown you in that. What what it what it really is about is this brilliant girl and how she is um, finding the truth despite everyone trying to cover it up. It seems so. I really liked this book. I really enjoyed it from beginning to end. There were no parts to me that waned. My intention was kept mm. and I would highly recommend a good girl, a good girl's guide to murder, which 
ironically, is not about how good girls can go around killing people. <laughs> really? I mean, the title doesn't fit the book at all, right? right? right, right it's just right. enticing. Right. Um, which I also respect. So really well done. Thank you for the recommendation, Alexis. I recommend it. Or I'm sorry, thank you for putting it on our list. I recommend it. What about you? I really enjoyed this book. Um, I was able to follow along with her. I loved being able to follow along with her as she um, gathered her list of persons of interest based off of interviews. I was able to keep up with her and... um, just follow. This is so strange, y'all. If you don't understand why Alex, why this is strange for Alexis, go back and listen to all four <laughs> of our Agatha Christie's <laughs> and any other mystery we have. Alexis be like, ah, I'll just take it as it comes. I'm not trying to figure out who did it. Yeah. So I love that you were all about that in this book. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, it was perfect for that. And it's like she, en- it was a, a very engaging book, you know? And when do you have an engaging book? You're really just reading the words on the page this one is like get involved with us let's follow this story and we can figure it out together and I love being a part of that and I loved how she had these uh, uh, log entries that kind of kept us current on the events yeah and it was just a really well told I, I didn't get to the point in the book where I'm like oh this is dragging on and on I think about one of the books we covered last year I can't yeah. call the name right the now guest house the last guest yes the last the house, last guest, house or something. guest and I was like can we just end tell this? me <laughs> yeah I don't even care no more and that's weird because there were a lot of suspects everyone in town basically is a suspect mm-hmm. but I didn't feel exasperated by it yeah yeah and that was the difference mm-hmm. for me um because that other one it was just like on and on and this one I was engaged the whole way through and I loved having that experience. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to love to include this book and maybe read her other books as well. Hopefully I can find the Killjoy book, the prequel. And they've, they're they all rated really well. I know you don't care about ratings, but that's incentive for me to dive right in. Yeah. Dive right into the series. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend this book. Love it. Okay. Well, thank you again, Alexis, for picking this book. We enjoyed it. Both of us recommend it. What are we reading next week? I know why the cage birds sing by Maya Angelou. That's right. Well, thank you all for listening to Lit Society. We'll see you next Thursday. Lit Society is brought to you by Alexis Anaria and Kari Herrera. Support the cause by leaving a five-star review for our show on Apple Podcasts, along with a comment about why you absolutely love us. We love y'all too. You can also leave a five-star review on Spotify now. So go over and do that for us. <laughs> also, if you're in the mood for a luxurious aromatic experience, go over to www.lovelightetees.com. That's L-O-V-E-L-I-T-O-T-E-S.com launching this week. If you've enjoyed what you've just heard, tell a friend about Lit Society. Visit LitSocietyPod.com for show notes, this month's book list, and to sign up for our amazing email newsletter. And until next time, read read something. something.